Hello and welcome to A B to Z. I'm Haley Ryerson. And I'm Angie Patrizino. On Tuesday, May 13th, the junior class will be sponsoring a bake sale during the intermission of the Senior Variety Show. More people are needed to bake food, so please email junior class advisors Caroline Smiley or Nikki Jeanette if you are interested. And thanks for supporting the junior class. Project graduation is only a month away. This Friday, June or on Friday, June 6th, Seniors get to spend a fun, alcohol-free night at school, enjoying the various activities with their friends. Here are Pierce and Connor with more on Project Graduation. For the last four years, members of the class of 2014 have spent countless hours in classrooms studying and learning in preparation for the future. Project Graduation is a celebration of their accomplishment and one last night for the seniors to be together. Pierce Cappuccioni recently had the opportunity to sit down with Helen Probst and ask her what exactly Project Graduation is. Well, Project Graduation is an all-night party that we as a community and as parents give to our senior graduates. It's our 25th year this year, and it's a way of celebrating seniors in a safe way. They come at 10 o'clock at night. They leave at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's a lock-in, so everybody has a good time. There's lots to do, lots of food. Um, music, prizes, it's a great night and it's all secret so I can't tell you exactly what we do but 90% uh, of the class comes. It's an awesome party. We then asked how the underclassmen and community get involved. The junior parents in particular uh, that we count on, we also count on anybody from the community. Um, past graduates can come help out um, but we need lots of volunteers, you know, a couple hundred volunteers by the end of the day. Um, to make this big party happen. And there's a lot of people, a lot of stuff. We then asked about some of the specific tasks volunteers could do for project graduation. Well, as a volunteer, you can get on the committee and plan this whole thing all year. Um, you can donate. Um, we're always looking for money. This is a very expensive party. I mean, it's $30,000, $35,000 by the time you're done um, paying for all of this. Um, so we need money from parents and from the community and, you know, People like Roach Brothers, they're awesome. They, they give us more than that. I mean, we, they, we do uh, fundraising nights where you come in and buy and they give us a percentage. Cambridge Ware up in the 2A27 Plaza does the same thing. Without the donations and volunteering by the community of Acton, project graduation would not be able to happen. Whether it is helping with the food or going to help out with a certain photo booth or activity, project graduation would not happen. It needs the community of Acton in order for these seniors to have one last hurrah with their class. Please donate or volunteer in any way, shape, or form if you can, if you want to help out these seniors with one last great night. The, Act oh. the Acton Boxborough community is saddened by the loss of former campus monitor Jack Rogers. He passed away on April 20th. Known as the Candy Man, Jack was well known for giving out candy to the students and staff. He brought a smile to work every day and he will be missed. Groups of students in Ralph Arabian's woodshop classes have constructed boats for Regatta Day on May 15th. Several parent volunteers are needed to help monitor the event, which will be held at Nara Park. Students will be testing their boats on the pond. Grills and a couple of people willing to cook are also needed. If you would like to help in any way, please contact Ralph Arabian at rarabian at abschools.org. And here with more on what to expect at the big Ralph Regatta is Ian Watlington. We here at AB to Z recently looked into the 2014 ABRHS Regatta. We asked Mr. Arabian what the Regatta is. The Regatta is a, um, an idea where you actually take design and build and put it all together. Uh, basically, you take some of the engineering concepts and some of the woodworking skills and you get a certain amount of wood, uh, plywood, which is basically one sheet, <clears throat> hence the name one sheet plywood boat. And basically uh, you construct a boat that will hold a certain amount of weight and that weight being the three students that are in the boat. And it's either going to sink or float depending on how good the numbers are. We asked him when the first regatta was. Uh, the first regatta here at AB was roughly uh, two, two and a half years ago. And uh, basically the kids thought it was a great idea. It was a little hard to sell to administration, basically telling them I'm going to take a bunch of high school kids who've never had any uh, experience building boats and we're going to put them out in the pond, 
you know, on boats that they built. But uh, I won their assurance that it would be safe, and um, you know, from that point they uh, they let it go. So it's been a big hit for the several years running now. We asked him where he first got the idea for the regatta. I've seen many things in the past, and I saw something similar to this, um, but not quite this. And I said, hmm, this might be a good idea to try. And I tried it at uh, uh, with a previous school that I worked at, and uh, turned out to be a great hit. And I ran the idea by a couple of people. Again, I had to sell the idea. And uh, it's, it's been off and running and has always been a success. Recently, a driving simulator machine was placed outside the ABRHS gym for one week. A driving simulator machine simulates the distracted driving sim situations. Several students were then pulled out of gym class and placed into the simulator. They could call, text, and wear vision impairing goggles to mimic the experience of driving under the influence. Wow! Sounds like an interesting and worthwhile experience. Let's learn more about it from Murr, Jake, and Dave. Acton Boxborough High School is hosting the Teen Drive Driving Simulator to better educate kids about the dangers of driving. We sat down with Mr. Perot to talk to him about more on the subject. The purpose of this is to better educate the young drivers about the um, dangers of distracted driving and impaired driving. That's why I mentioned that left mirror was important. Perot went on to explain to us the three stages of the simulator. So listen, there are many different simulations. The first one is a free drive, so they get to practice, get familiar with the simulator, how it feels, how it breaks, turns. After that, they do impaired, where the simulator itself will react as though they are impaired. So it will drift, it will weave, it will do things they're not accustomed to, just like somebody who's under the influence. Uh, after that, as they're doing now, is distracted driving. Recently, several AB students entered their artwork into the Scholastic Art Awards, and many came out big winners. Students won everything from honorable mentions to gold keys, with a total of 33 artists winning awards. Here we are with more info on the Scholastic Art Awards. This winter, many students at AB entered their artwork in the Boston Globe Scholastic Art Awards. They won various awards, and their artwork was on display in the Boston City Hall through March 28th. These young artists put a lot of work into creating the award-winning artwork. We asked sophomore Yanni Chigas, who submitted a short Lego stop-motion video, how long it took to create his piece. The actual animation only took about three weeks, which is pretty short for me. But then, the, um, uh, but all of the post-production, that took about a month or two. All After finishing their pieces, the students had to enter their works into the competition. The Scholastic Art Awards have changed their competition this past year. Art teacher Liz Mackay told us how the process of entering works now and how it has changed since the last year. Prior to this year, based on the student population, teachers were given an, an allotment of numbers of works they could submit. As of this year, students, any students could submit as many works as they wanted. Students can enter their art in 28 different categories. There are visual art categories that range from drawing and painting to fashion and jewelry to film and photography. Students can also enter all different kinds of writing, ranging from poetry to short stories to essays into the competition. Junior Isabel Bedarf told us why she entered her piece into the competition and how it helped her as an artist. Essentially, it's feedback when you get recognized. So that recognition, I want to look at that as something to say, I can earn something in the future from entering this. Judges have hard work deciding who to give the awards to because they receive so much good work. In the last five years, 900,000 pieces have been entered into the competition. Mrs. Mackay, who has been involved in the Scholastic Art Awards for about 30 years, told us how the judging process works. Actually, judging the work is based on um, technical still, skill is important, but personal vision and voice of the artist um, is the significant factor in the judging. Emma Warawinski described the process in more depth. And there's three judges, and if one judge says this is amazing, it should get a gold award, which is the highest level, then you get an honorable mention. If two say that, then you get a silver key, and if three say that, then you get a gold key. Various well-known artists have won Scholastic Art Awards since they began in 1923. Um, Andy Warhol, Sylvia Plath, um, Truman Capote, Richard Avedon, Robert Redford, Stephen King, 
Um, those are just a few of the people over the last, you know, 75 years who have gotten awards. Scholastic Art Awards are not the end of these students' careers. Emma Warawinski, a senior, told us about her plans for the future. Your art career. So next year I'm going to Rhode Island School of Design and I'm planning on studying either illustration or graphic design as of now. I'm not sure. We also asked Yanni about the future of his film and animating career. Um, I've actually applied to a school in Michigan called uh, Interlochen Center for the Arts. It's a high school and they offer a, a film program. Um, so I applied to that and I was actually accepted, but I'm still... After all their hard work, the students who won awards were invited to an award ceremony in Boston to see their work on display and to celebrate their accomplishments. We talked to junior Amy Liu about her experience and the ceremony. It's like they had this like whole ceremony where they like explained like the judging process and like celebrated all of like the award winners and then all the award winners like went up on stage and like announced their name and like their awards and stuff and then afterwards you we went to the um I think it was a city hall to look at the exhibition which was like really cool to see all the other people's works. Congratulations to all the winners. That's a wrap for this edition of AB to Z. I'm Haley Ryerson and I'm Angie Partizino. And now, stand by for another edition of AB to Z. I'm Piers Capuchuri. And I'm Nick Jaroschuk, and welcome to this edition of A, B to Z. The class play competition took place this past weekend. There were four productions, three of which were written and directed by students of Acton Boxborough. The evening was full of fun and surprises. Here are some interviews with the directors themselves. We asked Alex Grotherjik and Rowan Shea about their senior class play they directed and wrote. Um, Miss Potter takes applications, so there are a bunch of people that apply, and then uh, she really liked the show that I chose. It was written by Rowan Shea, so um, that's, that was, that's really awesome. It shows student creativity. It's Next, we asked Rowan about the play so, he wrote. So the plot is, it's, I kind of came off this idea of kind of a ridiculous premise that kind of throws all the characters in the show, and then at the end kind of coming together for more serious and honest conclusion. We'll be starring in this. We asked Alex who were the main um, characters in the play. There are a bunch of people, but the three main characters, uh, a guy named Wes, and he's going to be played by Rowan, and um, his best friend Nate is going to be played by uh, David Nicholson. They're awesome to watch together, a lot of fun. They're really, really good. And then the, the love interest, the female lead, is Faye Gillespie. She's really great. What did the worker at the rubber band factory say when he got fired? Oh, snap! <laughs> <laughs> the junior class will be sponsoring a bake sale at the Senior Variety Show on Tuesday, May 13th. Baked goods can be brought to school Tuesday morning to room 200 East or delivered to the show by 6.30 p.m. I sure do love a good cookie. Mm. If you're willing to bake, please email Carolyn Smiley at csmiley at abschools.org or Nikki Genote at ngenote at abschools.org. Groups of students in Ralph Arabian's woodshop classes have constructed boats for Regatta Day on May 15th. Several parent volunteers are needed to help monitor the event, which will be held at Narrow Park. Students will be testing their boats on the pond. Grills and a couple of people willing to cook are also needed. If you would like to help in any way, please contact Ralph Arabian at rarabian at abschools.org. And here with more on that, to expect as the big Ralph Arabian regatta is Ian Wallington. 
We here at AB to Z recently looked into the 2014 ABRHS regatta. We asked Mr. Arabian what the regatta is. The regatta is a, um, an idea where you actually take design and build and put it all together. Uh, basically, you take some of the engineering concepts and some of the woodworking skills, and you get a certain amount of wood, uh, plywood, which is basically one sheet. <clears throat> Hence the name one sheet plywood boat. And basically, uh, you construct a boat that will hold a certain amount of weight, and that weight being the three students that are in the boat. And it's either going to sink or float, depending on how good the numbers are. We asked him when the first regatta was. Uh, the first regatta here at AB was roughly uh, two, two and a half years ago. And uh, basically, the kids thought it was a great idea. It was a little hard to sell to administration, basically telling them I'm going to take a bunch of high school kids who've never had any uh, experience building boats and we're going to put them out in the pond, you know, on boats that they've built, but uh, I won their assurance that it would be safe and, um, you know, from that point they, uh, they let it go. So it's been a big hit for the several years running now. We asked him where he first got the idea for the regatta. I've seen many things in the past and I saw something similar to this, um, but not quite this, and I said, hmm, this might be a good idea to try, and I tried it at uh, uh, with a previous school that I worked at and uh, turned out to be a great hit. I, mean, I ran the idea by a couple of people. Again, I had to sell the idea. And uh, it's, it's been off and running and has always been a success. The track renovation project has suffered a series of major setbacks. After beginning the construction of the new track this past winter, the project was postponed and will be resuming this summer. With this unexpected row bump in the process, or should we call it a hurdle, some are concerned how it will affect the upcoming graduation. But have no fear. Ryan, Stelios, and Mike looked into the matter and have this report. Due to the highly anticipated track project, we went to Mr. DC to find out more about it. We asked Mr. DC when the track would be completed. We hope the project's going to be finished by mid-July. There was hope that the entire project would be done in the next month or so, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So the project is then will be suspended until after graduation for the completion of the project. We asked Mr. DC what is to be expected of the new tracks. It's going to be a state-of-the-art facility. It's a polyurethane. Uh, we put in eight lanes for the 100-yard dash so we can run, you know, large meets, invitationals. We asked Mr. DC how construction will affect graduation. Hopefully. Everything will work out fine. Um, I mean, right now it's a construction site, there's equipment up there, so it's sort of hard to visualize what the end result will be. For graduation, um, there's now eight lanes instead of six lanes, so one row of the bleachers are, have gone. There'll be new fencing. The old track will still be in place. Um, but I think um, on the, when it's all said and done, everything will be just fine for graduation. Recently, a driving simulator machine was placed outside the ABRHS gym for one week. What's that, Nick? Oh, Pierce, you silly little girl. A driving simulator machine simulates distracted driving situations. Several students were then pulled out of gym classes and placed into the simulator. They can text, call, and wear vision-impairing goggles to mimic the experience of driving under the influence. Wow, sounds like an interesting and worthwhile experience. Let's learn more about it from Murr, Jake, and Dave. Acton Boxborough High School is hosting the Teen Drive Driving Simulator to better educate kids about the dangers of driving. We sat down with Mr. Perot to talk to him about more on the subject. The purpose of this is to better educate the young drivers about the um, dangers of distracted driving and impaired driving. That's why I mentioned that left mirror was important. Perot went on to explain to us the three stages of the simulator. So listen, three different simulations. The first one is a free drive, so they get to practice, get familiar with the simulator, how it feels, how it breaks, turns. After that, they do impaired, where the simulator itself will react as though they are impaired. So it will drift, it will weave, it will do things they're not accustomed to, just like somebody who's under the influence. Uh, after that, as they're doing now, is distract the driving. This week marks the beginning of the Senior Internship Program at AB. Senior Internship Program. What's that, Pierce? 
Oh, Nick. <laughs> the internship program gives students the opportunity to gain work experience in a field of their choosing over the last three weeks of their high school career. In fact, here's more on this great program. The senior internship program is one of the great traditions at Acton Boxborough High School, and we caught up with Miss Hammond to learn more. So the senior internship program is an opportunity that seniors have at AB who have taken the senior seminar class to apply to possibly spend the last three weeks of senior year finished with school and out in the world working uh, with a professional in the field that they're interested. It was started about 18 years ago and I think the main goal was to ease the transition for seniors into work. I think um, when, in, when the class, senior seminar and the internship were both created sort of about the same time and it was at a time when more students were going from high school directly to work and so I think this was meant to help them move into that world with a little more support from the school. Students along with Miss Hammond told us the benefits of the senior internship program. Good opportunity to get work experience and uh, it's uh, I feel like it would be a lot more useful than the last couple of weeks of school where you basically don't do a lot. Well I think the benefits are that you do get real exposure to um, I think work at a at a level maybe a little bit higher than what you might get as a typical high school job and also a high school job is going to be more often than not something just to make money. It offered an internship which would allow me to not take finals and to get some great work experience in the field that I'm potentially interested in. Well sadly that's all the time we have for this edition of AB to Z. I'm Pierce Capuccioni alongside Nick Jaroschuk. Hold your horses Pierce but before we go we are going to take a musical look back at last Friday's Senior Community Service Day. So long everyone. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Coach K, new idea. We do a, a poem segment where we read the, this week's poem, this mm. week's featured poem. Turn around, never know a man will get it. Hello, I'm Pierce Capuccioni. And I'm Nick Jaroschuk. And this is this edition of A B to Z. The class, the class, like, <laughs> <laughs> it went too slow. <laughs> I should be doing this. Third time's a charm. Groups of students in Ralph Arabian's Arabian's Woodshop class classes have <laughs> constructed boats for Regatta Day on May 15th. Turn around, never know a man will get the junior class will be sponsoring a bake sale at the Senior Varsity Show on, tu <laughs> on Tuesday, May 13th. It's not even your line. I know it's on my line. I started reading it and then I realized that. Turn around, never know a man will get World Language Department leader, Mrs. Claire Dix, has dedicated <laughs> over 30 years of her life to teaching students here. <laughs> I, I expected just Dix. to be Mrs. Claire. <laughs>